I know some of you are looking at this and thinking, yeah, where do I go with this? So let me give you a bit of a steer, hopefully, and a helpful direction. Similar task that we have to begin with, um, but slightly different information. We need to begin by finding a vector equation of a line. Uh, we've got a point that the line L goes through, 3, 2, 6. And so immediately, that's actually, this is example 2. This is actually the first piece of information I want. That point that I go through, line L goes through, 3, 2, 6, what does it represent in my vector equation of a line? 3, 2, 6, which part of this? Vector equation is it? It's the, it's the position vector. I've got to get on to the line. So I'm going to begin just by saying 3, 2, 6. Ta-da! I'm on the line now. Right? Then I need to know which direction I am facing with. And again, the question helpfully tells us. But you need to sort of see through which bit is relevant. Can anyone help me out? You have two choices. 50-50 if you're really just guessing. The direction vector I want here, right? is going to match, or the easiest way, is just to match the direction vector of the other line, which in this case is negative 3, 1, 2. So again, I want to draw that parallel that the, um, the syllabus helpfully does to saying, if we had just straight lines on a Cartesian plane, right? this is very analogous to you know, y equals mx plus b, right? where this gradient here is very similar to our direction vector. And if I ask you to find two parallel lines, you just ignore the y-intercept, because it's irrelevant, right? Where are you? Doesn't matter. Which way you're facing, that's the part that's important. So I have my vector equation of my line. I just had to read off the relevant information. Then we have to do a bit of thinking, right? Find the coordinates of the points where L meets the xy plane, and it's the xz plane is the other one we're interested in, OK? Now, um, there's two ways to go about this. If you've gotten to a point of <clears throat> excuse me, fluency, you can just say, there's a value I need to substitute in, and my numbers will come out. Right? If you're at that point, good for you. But for the rest of us who are kind of like, wait, what's the, where do I go? Have a think about it. Maybe it would be helpful to you. If you did not immediately see, Morgan, I think you might already know where to go, and I'll come to that in a second. Draw yourself a little you know, three-dimensional coordinate system, right? just so we can understand, even if you do know exactly what the next step is, why the next step is what it is. Where is the xy plane on this diagram? The xy plane, that's the first one we're doing. It's the one, you, it is actually helpful to do this with your hands, isn't it, right? It's the one that I guess you could say is lying flat on the ground as we look down at it, right? So I'm just going to shade it in here. This guy here is the xy plane. Now, think about this with me. If you were on the xy plane, <clears throat> excuse me, any, uh, any value of x is allowable. You can move freely in x. And any value of y is also allowable. You can move freely in y. What you're not allowed to move in is z, right? You're kind of locked in down on the ground, as it were. And there's a z value that goes with that, right? To find our x, y, our intercept to the x, y plane, which I guess we would call our x, y intercept, right? Morgan, do you want to tell me what value we should actually take on? So to find the, um, let that be. Okay, fantastic. We're about to do this just shortly. But I just want to, again, draw this parallel to all the things you know in the Cartesian plane. If I asked you to find a y-intercept, our intercept with the y-axis, what would you instinctively do without even thinking about it? You would sub in, for the y-intercept, you'd find x equals 0, right? Well, that's exactly what you're doing here. Do you see this? It's like, these are the axes along which I can move. So those values are variable, but this is the axis on which I can't move. So that's why it's fixed. Let z equal 0. So when you go ahead and do that, what do you get? If z equals 0, that gives you, have a look. I'm going to try and find an appropriate lambda here, right? And here, here's my values that correspond to z, right? So I'm going to get, what am I going to get? 6 plus 2 lambda? Is that what I'm getting for my z component, that's going to equal 0 because that's what I've set, right? And from here I can say, well, therefore, lambda equals negative 3. Negative three. Okay? I'm so happy at this point that you guys know what to do. I'm even just going to hit pause on that. You can take that value of lambda and you're going to pop it into x, you're going to pop it into y, and you'll get, well, what did we get? Uh, 12, negative 1, 0? Yeah. So this is going to dot, 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 tw whoop, 12, negative 1, 0, when we substitute into the x component when we substitute into the y component. Don't bother substituting into the z component, please. Why? 
Because you already did that, right? Well, you, this is your assumption, right? Um, though if you wanted to test, go ahead and make sure you found the right lambda, put it back in, you're like, oh, I didn't get z equals 0. Something's going wrong. By analogy, what am I going to do to find the x? Is it the xz intercept? Can't remember. Xz, right? To find the xz intercept, what will I substitute? Yeah, fantastic. Let y equal 0. By the way, please note, please note, even on whiteboard working, which I'm quite happy to skip a few things because I know you know what I'm doing, please note what I do not write here. I don't just write y equals 0 and then start doing some arithmetic. Tell me what on earth you're doing. Every single vector equation of a line has three equations hiding underneath it. And then every time you substitute, you make a new one, right? So if you're going to say y equals 0, tell me why you're doing that, why you're doing that, and then your working can actually be read in a meaningful way. Once you do that, what do you get? I think there's, is there a 9 in there? 9. Zero. I already knew the y was 0. And then 2. That's what we're going to get out of this. Make sense? OK, I hope that clicks for you. I promised three examples. So here is the last one. Let me guide you through this a little bit. And then we'll see how far you can get on your own. We're given two vector equations of lines. Uh, it used to weird me out that they're both called r. And then I realized, wait a second, we do this all the time, right? If I said to you, oh, here's a parabola, y equals x squared. And here's some other line, y equals 2x minus 1. Find points of intersection. We have no problem calling one y and the other one also y. Same deal here, OK? So both equations, r equals this and r equals that. Now, there's some language here we just have to be a bit cautious of, right? By equating components. That's not something that comes up explicitly in our syllabus. At least it doesn't anymore. But we've been doing this kind of implicitly the whole time through. What it's implying is you've got information about x. In the first equation, you'd have 3 plus lambda 1. That's all of your x information. Yeah. The second equation, you also have some information for x. It's uh, 3 minus 2 lambda 2. Do you see that? That's what I got from the x components. Okay. If I'm finding a point of intersection, what can you tell me about the x components of both those lines? They should match. They should be equal to each other, right? So that's going to give us an equation with lambda 1, lambda 2. You can do the same thing for y. You can do the same thing for z. That's what they mean by equating components. I'm going to let you have a whirl. See if you can find that point of intersection. And uh, when you go through that, I just want you to know there are actually some strange curveballs hidden in this question that are not to do with getting the answer, but um, the fact that there's extra information that we sort of don't need to get the answer. And so that's what I want sitting in the back of your mind if you get this answer quickly. If not, um, I'll give you maybe three minutes and we'll work through a solution together. Let me give you a bit of a hand. I've begun by having a look at, as the question suggested, the x component, the y component. Okay, So you can see I've already started. Um, I equated the x component from the first line with the x component from the second one. And I got this. And I've labeled it equation 1 because I know I'm going to need to use it in a second. right? I do the same here. At this point, what I'm trying to do is solve for lambda 1 or lambda 2. And so I can just refer back to equation 1. So I guess the most obvious substitution to make is let's substitute that for negative 2 lambda 2. Yeah. So I get negative 4 lambda 2 over here. Is that OK? Yeah. Yep. So I've got negative 5 plus lambda 2. I guess I could subtract lambda 2. And I should say, by the way, I've done a substitution here. So this is from 1. Right? Again, show me where you got these things from. And then subtracting lambda 2 from both sides, I get this. Are you content? Yep. Now, at this point, I mentioned I made this reference to additional information in the question. I wonder how many of you from here instinctively said, whoa, I had simultaneous equations. I found one unknown. Guess I better find the other one. Now, I just want to hit pause on that thought. Because have you noticed? I don't need to find the other one. Why not? Like we always do this, simultaneous equations, two variables, find both variables. Why don't I need them both in this case? Calvin, what do you reckon? Oh, because you just get the same answer either way, which is the intersection. Fantastic. Um, this question's kind of told you, hey, there is a point of intersection. There just, there just is one. It's not asking whether there is one. This value here, lambda 2, relates to, oh, I didn't even write it down. It relates to the second equation, right? And it fixes unambiguously one point on that line. If it is indeed the point of intersection, it'll give me a point on the other line, right? Morgan, were you going to say something similar to that or different? Um, basically similar. On 
just saying that it's important to know that there's only one kind of intersection at a time. So it's not necessary to kind of choose. Yeah, fantastic. Um, you know, this, this tells us there is that single point of intersection. This value of lambda, that'll give it to us. Worth pointing out, later on, we're going to have, you know, solving things in three dimensions that are not just lines, that will not just have a single point of intersection. So then you do need to be cautious. But in this case, I mean, did anyone go ahead and find out the appropriate value of lambda 1? Yes. What was it? Uh, minus two. Minus negative two, yeah. Now, it's not like this is worthless. It actually can be quite handy. I asked you guys, like, how would you know whether this was, whether you got the right point of intersection? Which was, by the way, what was it? Negative, was it negative one, five? One, negative one, five. I got my negatives mixed up. One, negative five, five. How would we know? Because presumably we get that from substituting this into the second equation. How would we know it was right? One way is, we'll just have a look at the other lambda. Put it into the other line, and sure enough, you get the same point. Okay. Now we're actually not done quite yet with our additional information. We can get, what do we say? Negative one, sorry, one, negative five, five, eventually I remember it, right? We can get this just from lambda one, right? We didn't need, sorry, lambda two is what we started with. We don't need lambda one. There's even more information in the question, did you notice, that we have not even touched. Have a look, it's even on the board, right? What I used and what I didn't use. Say it again. Yeah, look at this. I inspected x, equated those components. I inspected y, right? And I didn't even need this z information. Why is it flying around there? Because you know that there is a point of intersection between two lines, mm -hmm. so you don't really need to test it again mm. to show that there actually is a point that using the same lambda. Very good. Joe's exactly on the money. If you didn't quite catch that, right? How do we go about solving this? We needed either lambda 1 or lambda 2. So that's two unknowns. You only need two equations to solve for two unknowns. So the third one's just kind of a bonus. However, if we did write that kind of a bonus, right, what would that z equation look like? Can you equate them for me? What would the components be? 7 lambda 1 equals 2 plus 3 lambda 1. 7 plus lambda 1? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> what's a What's a plus sign between friends, right? Kind of a lot, but that's OK. What was on the right hand side? What's a two plus three lambda? OK, fantastic. Now, what's lovely about this is just have a look at this equation now. We've already got a value for lambda 1 and for lambda 2. Does it work out? It better, right? Uh, what do we get over here? You'd get 5, wouldn't you? And then over here, 2 plus 3. Good to go. What would happen, what would it mean if, for example, because these z components, not having looked at them, right? Suppose the z component of the second line Suppose it wasn't 3. Suppose it was something like 4. What would that mean? Think back to our very first question today. What would this mean for us? I would have a lambda 1 and a lambda 2 that work for x. They work for y, but then they don't work for z. In other words, I've missed, right? Now we have a name for this when you've got two lines that just completely miss each other. Not that they're in the syllabus, but they're called skew lines. S-K-E-W, skew lines. These lines that are not parallel, right? But they never intersect. In two dimensions, that doesn't happen, right? In two dimensions, if you've got two lines that aren't parallel, they've got to collide somewhere, right? But in three dimensions, we've just got lots more space to play with, right? Um, which airline pilots around the world are very thankful for. All right, I'm going to hit pause there. These three questions, they all take knowledge you already knew, right? But when you start to interact with these points of intersection and how the lines relate to each other, um, you've got to think quite carefully about what you're doing with these equations and why.